Hi everybody, it's Daphne and you're very welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for coming to spend some time with me today. I really appreciate it. Today I'm going to do my February favourites and I have quite a few things to get through so I'm going to get stuck straight in. Um, one of the things that I've really been loving recently is this little primer. It's a prep and perfect but it's a skin illuminator and it's from PS which is the Primark range or pennies in Ireland. Um, I heard about it on Instagram and I can't remember who recommended it, but I thought oh, I'd pick it up. I think it was four euro and this is absolutely beautiful. So it comes out as a white cream like that. But as you can see, as you blend it out, you'll be able to see the luminosity. I hope. Yes, you can. Um, so it, you can wear it on its own or you can wear it under makeup. Or you could probably mix a little bit of it into makeup if you wanted to give yourself a more dewy finish but that's it and i've really been loving it i've been wearing it under makeup and it works really well and i did speak about this in one of my last videos because i used it in a get ready with me and this is the carter beauty half measure dewy foundation in the color creme brulee that's it there um a really good color match for me even though i did think initially that it was a bit dark um this applies well with your fingers it applies well with um, a brush. Um, to, uh, you can I've used two different types of brushes. This one, which is my Sephora, um, it's a dome diffuser, and then I've used it with a very tight Kabuki brush, which I do have somewhere. Um, but it blends out beautifully. You can also apply it with a beauty sponge. Um, but it's a nice light foundation, light to medium coverage. But to me, for me, it lasts so well on my skin without feeling heavy or cakey. It doesn't sit into fine lines. Um, I still, hours later, still have a, a kind of a, a glow, which I've always had a problem with, with foundations. Um, so highly recommend that. And then to go with that, these are, that, that was nine euro 50 cent. I mean, it's up there with um, high end, let me tell you. And the lady behind the brand is Marissa Carter, and you would know her if you use the Coco Brown um, self tanners and the foams. And there's other, there's a whole range of co of Coco Brown now, and she is behind the um, the cosmetics as well. Um, you can buy them in pennies, or I don't know if they have them in Primark in England. I don't, I don't know. Um, but they, you can buy them online, and they do ship to the states, and I, they ship. I presume worldwide, um, but uh, very well priced, um, good quality um, products. This I have been loving as well, and it, I'll just show you so that you can see that the, the, the one is pinky and one is purpley. This is the concealer. It's the cove. What is it called? Covert concealer, and I'm in the color um, meringue. You won't be able to see it. It's teeny tiny. I don't think you will anyway. That's it there. But this I did think might be a bit too pale, but. Um, and it does look quite pale, but it blends out beautifully. And I have been having, well, the only way I can describe it is troughs under my eyes. Um, and I've noticed, I've just noticed as time is passing that they are getting that little bit worse. So I've been trying to, I've been trying to sort of illuminate, the, what do they say? If you brighten, it brings it forward. So, um, but it's a very good concealer. It doesn't cake. Um, I let it set for a minute and then I blend it out again and it doesn't cake. This isn't a sponsored video, it just is per chance that I purchased these and I've really, really loved them. And this is the other one, this is the Carter Beauty um, uh, setting powder. Um, you can bake with it as well. This is in the colour Natural um, and it's a lovely powder. Now, I don't use a lot of powder and sometimes I don't bother wearing any at all, but it's very, it's quite finely milled. It's a very pale, it's not a translucent, it's, a, it's got a little bit of colour, but it doesn't disrupt the colour of your makeup. And I literally just tip a little into the lid, dip my brush in and just sort of go along where I wouldn't pack it in. So I've been loving that as well. Now, the last of that product line is the Steadfast Liquid Liner Pen. And that's it there, and it's a black one. And this is so easy to use you can get a beautiful sharp line with it. You can have it as thick as you want, as thin as you want. You let it set and it doesn't go anywhere. And if you've watched me before, you'll know that I've had trouble with eyeliners breaking down because I don't know if I have oily eyes or watery eyes or whatever, but eyeliner tends to break down on my eyes. Um, and I've been really impressed with this. It's so easy to use. I have it on today. And you can see there, it hasn't smudged or anything. Um, I've really been loving it. We'll just let it set for a second and look at that. Even with a cotton pad, 
it's not moving. Um, so really impressed with that. The other, another makeup item has been my Essence Hello New York eyeshadow palette. That's the cover, I love that. And I love these kinds of packaging because they don't break, the, you know, you don't have hinges to break um, and they're just so light to carry as well. It has a lovely, um, I won't blind you, but it has a lovely mirror. And then there are the colors. Um, and as you can see, I've been using them and I have used it to create this look today. So what I used was the blue on my lid. Actually it comes out like a paler blue. And then this purpley shade, mauve shade up in my crease and up onto my brow bone. And then a little of this champagne, white champagne color on the inner corner. Um, and I put the blue underneath as well, which is a complete departure for me. I don't normally go for the kind of cooler um, colors. I more, normally go more for the sort of brown tones and neutral tones and warmer tones. Um, but I did do a look with this, so I will link it um, somewhere. <laughs> Um, now I have a couple of lip products as well and um, these now these are not new I've mentioned them several times before but you know I don't know about you I kind of rotate my my lipsticks um, I like to put them away for a while and take out some other ones and um, I suppose lipsticks are my my downfall this is an urban decay and it's a cream lipstick in the color rush it looks quite pinky on that but it's actually not it's more of a tawny pink and I'm actually wearing it today, but I'm wearing it as a combination. So you can see that there. It's a lovely shade, very comfortable to wear, not drying because it's a cream lipstick. So what I did was I outlined and filled in with Max Spice. And then I went over it with Urban Decay Rush. And then I put a little of the Marissa Carter lip tint in Saoirse, um, which is an Irish um, girl's name. You, you won't, I don't know if you'll be able to see it there, Saoirse. And it's, I thought this was darker, excuse me, at Gino's. I thought this was darker when I was buying it. Sometimes the lights in the store can make them look a different, you know, in general can make lipsticks and things look a different colour. So this is quite pinky, um, paley, nudie pink. It's not great on my lips on its own, but over a lipstick it's gorgeous. So you could put it over a brown lipstick or a pink, and I'll just show you. So it comes out you think, oh, that's kind of very pale. But it just sort of seeps into your skin and it's lovely and comfortable to wear as well. And I just think it gives another dimension to, I think very often the best um, lip colors are combinations that we just sort of stumble upon. And the last makeup item is this NYX matte lipstick and it's in the color Whipped Caviar, which is a beautiful shade that's upside down sorry and um, it's a kind of a brownie bronzy shade and this is one that I would keep I'll just put it beside the Urban Decay so that's it there you can see it's a darker color it's more brownie than this one um, but that's one that I would those two would live in my makeup purse that I keep in my handbag because they kind of are universal shades so they'll go with a lot of things if you're stuck um, because sometimes I'll put a lip colour on in the morning and um, I might forget to throw it in my bag and if I'm out somewhere one of those will suffice. So there are all the makeup items. Um, I have some, I'm going to wipe this off so I don't smear it onto my, the clothing items that I'm going to show you. I have been trying to shop more sustainably um, and there's a, there's two beautiful shops in Dublin. Um, they're charity shops, vintage shops, whatever pre-loved whatever you want to call them but the clothes that are donated they get a lot of designer clothes um some very high end you know a nice range of clothing um so you could get the zaras and the coast and um you know you could get ted baker you could get gucci you could get ralph lauren it depends and um, they get beautiful bags and accessories as well and very often these items have been worn maybe once it's all run on a voluntary basis and uh, the money raised through the two shops along with a couple of big fundraisers through the year goes to fund um, orphanages in um, russia um, and they are fully staffed and the staff is fully trained and it's a wonderful wonderful um, charity to support so as much as I can I will shop there and I went one day and I bought um, a coat, a fur gilet and a pair of Mew Mew sunglasses for 20 euro. The coat was 20 euro, 
and the gilet, the fur gilet was, was 12. So I'm going to, just going to show you now, they're here beside me. Oops, I'm dropping everything. This is the fur gilet. Um, it's from a, it's a high street store, but it's, um, it's, called, it's from New Look. So I think that's in England as well, but it's a beautiful gray, silvery gray fur gilet. Um, perfect condition, I love it. It's great for layering on days when you maybe don't need a full jacket, but you still need something kind of cozy and with a scarf and whatever, and you can layer jumpers underneath, sweaters underneath. But I absolutely love it. 12 euro. Then, this was my absolute favorite. This is a Zara coat. You can see, Zara basics. Um, in this lovely powder blue, it's just a straight, maybe slightly A-line coat. It has a little pleat at the back, the little half belt, and the stitching is beautiful. Pockets there and two snaps, not um, buttons, and then this lovely collar. And it comes to com just my knee. A perfect coat for this time of year. Absolutely love it, and I wear it with a sort of a, an animal print gray and black scarf and black gloves and so on and um, yeah it's abs I absolutely love it so the Miu Miu sunglasses that I bought I was thrilled with them because these were worth over 300 euro and I got them for 20 and I was so happy and the next day I wore them out shopping with my daughter I went to use the bathroom in the shopping centre and somewhere I lost the, the glasses it was the first day I had worn them now my, my mother would God, God rest her soul would always have said to me let all bad luck go with it but I was a little bit taken aback and a little bit sorry for myself that I'd lost them and um, it was the week before Valentine's and when I got up and my, my husband felt sorry for me and when I got up on Valentine's Day these were waiting. Now, I would never buy myself designer sunglasses unless they were 20 euro and I got these. How about that? He had described to the sales assistant that he wanted something Audrey Hepburn-esque and this is what she recommended and I absolutely love them they're Ray-Bans Ray -Bans. and I will mind those really really carefully <laughs> um, so that's the kind of accessories and clothes two books one is this one here it's called The Return of the Soldier it's by Rebecca West but it's a short little read and it's about um, a young man coming back from the trenches in the First World War he has had traumatic experiences and he doesn't remember that he's married and he thinks he's still with his old girlfriend. An interesting read. So that's a good one. Um, this one is by Lisa Jewell. It is called Before I Met You. It tells the story of a grandmother and her granddaughter set 70 years apart. The granddaughter had looked after the grandmother. She's not her biological grandmother um, on the island of Guernsey in the Channel Islands. And when the grandmother dies, she's a kind of a curious type of figure. Um, she leaves Betty, the younger girl, um, a sum of money and Betty goes off to London to sort of seek her fortune and also to trace the grandmother's um, history which is very interesting and something critical happens to Arlette in the 20s and um, that sends her back to the island of Guernsey and the Channel Islands and she never leaves it again so we're going to find out what that is I haven't quite got to it but um, I'm not too far off it's telling it's told you know it'll switch between the 1920s then it'll come back to the 1990s so it's the story of the two women 70 years apart but they're linked so it's a really really good read I'm really enjoying it I'll let you know how it, how it finishes and then um, this is a beautiful mug my daughter was in London last week so I asked her to bring me home a Kath Kitson mug and this is depicting Piccadilly so you have the red London bus and what do we have um, is that the the monument there um, the Trafalgar I'm not sure um, and that's obviously a big shopping centre. Um, anyway, it's a beautiful mug. I love it. And um, yeah, I'm really pleased with that. So they're the things I've been loving. I hope you've enjoyed this. If you haven't already, maybe you would consider subscribing and it, please give me a thumbs up if you've enjoyed this video and I will talk to you very soon in the next video. Take care. Bye.